Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? How y'all doing today? Welcome to I've Been Falsely Accused, part 16. I'm your host, Koji. My partner, Mr. Jeffrey Deskovic, he won't be in with us today. He's got a college uh, turn paper or something he has to work on, and he's definitely doing it big with his college stuff, making sure that he moves forward with his knowledge to help move both of us forward to help us be able to fight this cause even better. I'm glad y'all tuned in with us today. To everybody around the world, I want to say hello. How y'all doing? Turn your radios up, put your seatbelts on, lock your doors, and get ready for a great show. To everybody, before I start the show, I always say, get your pens and your paper. Definitely get your pens and your paper. We got some great guests on today. Today is going to be a great show. It's going to be full of information. Uh, we got a young man who contacted me over the weekend. His name is Victor, and he's in need of our help right now. And we got Miss Laura Carwell. She's going to be in with us, and she's definitely doing it big. She's the founder of the Life After Innocence Project. We got Mr. Antoine Day. He'll be with us. And, you know, he served nine years in prison, you know, something that he didn't do, and he got out. So we definitely got a first hour that's really loaded but this first hour is going to have information because Miss Laura she's going to talk to Victor a little bit about his case we're going to hear you know from Antoine about what he's been through Antoine's doing some great things you know and he's going to talk about that how he's giving back but I just want to say to everybody that these shows are very important now one thing I want to say before I start this show y'all always know I give y'all a little something to think about and why we doing this show last night I couldn't sleep and I tossed and turned I tossed and turned because whenever I do these shows my spirit is restless my spirit is restless and I'm definitely calling on my higher power to give me the right words to say today to definitely help people understand I help the people who feel like oh this could never happen to me you know to have a a more better heart and not have a heart of just turning away a blind eye to people being hurt with the justice system now what came to me this morning when I was in the shower it came to me run tell that Now, that meaning run, tell that. This is what I mean by that. You have some people who see things on Facebook and they share it. They go, oh, my God, you know, y'all need to see this. Everybody click on this. Y'all won't believe it. Well, why is it so hard for you to do that when you see Exano Reeves come across Facebook? You see their pictures, them with their hands up in the air, thanking God, are just pumping their fists, thanking, you know, everybody for their support. Why don't we run and tell that? Why don't we share that picture? Why don't we, you know what? And and one thing I want to tell y'all, I know everybody know somebody who gossips heavy all the time. Make sure that you share it to that person. And let that person share it. And that's what I mean by run and tell that run and tell some good things that's happening in the development of these people getting out of prison. Run and tell that the justice system is a railroading people every day. Run and tell about certain articles that you see in the paper where they talking about somebody got put away for this or they got put away for that. And come to find out they spent 30 years or 25 years and they didn't even do it. Why don't you take those same articles, share them to everybody. Everybody, when you go to work and you're sitting at lunch, speak on it. Run and tell that. Speak on it at the table. Hey, did y'all hear about the young man, this, that, and the other, you know, whoop, whoop, whoop. And maybe it'll stir up conversation. But I think when we talk about it more and more and more, people start believing that this is real. Don't wait till it hits your household because it could be too late. And definitely, When I say get your pens and your paper, you want this information because this information can save your life. Not only can it save your life, but it can save the lives of other people that you care about. There might not be a family member, but they could be a co-worker. You know, her son or daughter could be going through the same thing. You can say, hey, I heard this show on I've Been Falsely Accused. You can get in touch with Miss Laura Carwell. You can get in touch with Jeffrey Deskovich. You can get in touch with Koji. You can call and you can go to their website and check out what they got on there. I mean, it's so many people around the world that I can't name everybody that's really fighting for this cause. We are not the only ones. I tell y'all. All the time me and jeffrey can't do it alone we 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 have super friends you know what i'm saying where we all feel the same way and we all are in the same fight it hurts me every time these exonerees come through my show and i hear these stories that they go into and how much life that they got wasted well you know some of them lost all their teens they lost all their 20s now they's in they in their 30s some of them are in their late 40s and they got to start all over but when they get out they still got a bum rap people still think they guilty even though they've been proven innocent people still don't want to give them jobs 
jobs. They'd rather give the next person a job with a lack of experience over the exoneree who has a record that's been, you know, shown that the person didn't even do it. But they'd rather go with the person with the cleaner slate for whatever reason over the person that best fits the job. So one thing I'm telling y'all today, whenever y'all see Anything they got to do with exonerees. Whenever y'all see these men and women get out and they free and they've been put away for nothing, run and tell that. I really want y'all to run and tell that because I do it. Me and my whole team do it. Run and tell that. You know, you, you see all these fights on Facebook. Y'all y'all busy sharing it, telling people, oh, my God, watch how this person gets knocked out. Well, you know what? Exonerees, they get knocked out every day. We got people around the world that's getting knocked out every day by the court system. You know what I'm saying? So run and tell that. Run and tell that that's real. Half of the people, you know, that find out that they name been brought up in something and they go down to the police station to talk about it. They never see the light of day again. When they walk in that police precinct, they never see the light of day again. So we're going to talk about all we're going to talk about the proper way of doing things other than you just walking in the you know, police station and saying, hey, I'm so and so, you know, I'm Mr. Uh, uh, Antoine, you know, day and I'm here because my name came up in something. And then they put your hands behind your back. No, 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 no. We're going to tell you the proper way of doing it. First, we're not telling you to run from the situation. Definitely don't do that. But you need to get an attorney. You need to do it the proper way so you can see daylight again and you won't just be railroaded and treated any kind of way. That's why we have Miss Laura Cowell. That's why we have all the special guests that we have coming through, all the people who's fighting it, all the people who are in higher power of helping people. We have them to come through. But people play so ignorant with the people that I bring through and y'all won't even use the resources that I give y'all. And I'm giving them to y'all for free. Miss Laura Cowell and everybody, they come through this show for free for free pro bono work that they doing for the community because they love the community and they love the people you know who's definitely being railroaded to see a light and a better day for these people so please stop being foolish please stop having a blind eye to things that you can see i mean so plain in sight that people are getting real wrote it every day now if you don't believe me you know go to the websites for exonerees you can go to my site you can look up uh, Antoine Day you can look up OB you know what I'm saying you can look up Mr. Youssef everybody that's coming through our show today look up how these people have lost their lives over a lie and other people who have been tricked to you know manipulated to get these people in trouble just to close a case run and tell that run and tell that so we'll be right back. Much love to y'all. And like I said, whenever you tune into these shows, please have respect and learn from these shows because we don't do them for nothing. People are losing their lives and people are also getting out and I'm honoring them. It's always more ways to get home. When you're in prison, you do whatever you got to do to get home. You go to the library. You go, you, you use your resources, you know, to get in touch with attorneys. You try to get in touch with the Innocent Project. You do whatever you need to do to find your way home. And that's what this is about today. We'll be right back and y'all get ready for a great show. Hey, 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 we back, everybody. Welcome back to I've Been Falsely Accused, part 16. You know what? Let me tell you something. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good today. I'm feeling good because, like I said, we definitely saving lives. We touching souls. And we definitely changing the minds of the unbelievers that this ain't happening. And like I said, and we going to go to Jay right now. Jay's going to introduce our guest that's in today. But before I go to Jay, I want to say this. If you don't believe it's true, you go check out all these websites and you check out these exonerees that's coming through the show today. And definitely, please, whatever you do, do this for me. Run and tell that. Go ahead, Jay. Laura Caldwell is a former civil trial attorney, now the distinguished scholar in residence at Loyal University Chicago School of Law. She is also director of Life After Innocence and a published author of 14 novels, one nonfiction book, Long Way Home, A Young Man Lost in the System, and The Two Women Who Found Him. Caldwell, who lives in Chicago, continues to teach at Loyola Law School, write, direct the Life After Innocence program, and enjoy the journey. We also have on the show Mr. Antoine Day, who served nine years and 100 days in jail plus three years in county jail for a crime he did not commit. We want to welcome Miss Laura Caldwell and Mr. Antoine Day to the I've Been Fall Safety Show. Hey, how y'all doing today? We are fantastic. We're great. We're great. I'm excited, man. You got me charged up. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know what? Let me tell you something. My heart is definitely in this, man. I don't, I don't fake it to make it. This is my real prove heart. It to me, brother, I can hear it. You, you know, you can tell when it's real. You know what? But I want to ask y'all: Are y'all really fired up, though? 
Are we fired up with you? <laughs> Laura, are you really fired up? I, I am. In fact, I, it was like music to my ears listening to the, you know, the story about Antoine and the band, and then you guys, and, and your words. I mean, I felt like for a while um, I felt kind of alone in, uh, in, in shining a light on exonerees and what people were going through after wrongful convictions, and it's just like... It just warms my heart. Seriously, I almost felt like I was going to get teared up. It's really, like, so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? I'm definitely fighting for the underdogs, and I'm fighting for the people who's going through it right now. You know what I'm saying? The people who 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 are in the midst of the fire right now. Like, we got a young man on the phone right now. Victor. Vic- Hi, how are you Okay, you right here with me? Yeah. All right. So, uh, Miss Laura and, uh, you know, Mr. Day, this is Victor. Victor's fighting a court case right now. He got in touch with me and Jeffrey over the weekend, and he's definitely going through something. So what I want to do, Miss Laura, I definitely want you to tell our listeners what you do for the Innocent Project. You're the founder. Can you break all that down for us? And then I want to go to Mr. Day. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. But a little bit towards the end of the show, Miss Laura, I definitely want you, if you can, to help get Victor on the right road, you know, of what you think he might do and me and you talked personally laura and you even told me like koji you know i didn't i didn't seen this happen i understand what's going on and you know i mean you can tell it better than me you get what i'm saying i'm with you okay so victor you know thank you for turning to me and jeffrey and that makes me feel good when people get in touch with me on the website and they ask me for help because that's why i'm here i'm here to be a bridge to great people like laura great people like mr day who's out and they making a better way for people they're trying to put people in homes so they're not out on the street they don't have to do whatever they got to do to survive and end up back in prison we don't want that on this show we definitely giving y'all the right tools we giving y'all the right message and we want to make sure that y'all stay out and y'all prove the court system not only was y'all wrong for what y'all convicted me with but y'all was wrong for even dealing with a person like me because i ain't with that i ain't trying to get in trouble i ain't trying to kill nobody hurt nobody rob nobody that ain't me y'all got the wrong people and you know we had to prove it in court you had the wrong person with the dna testing but you know miss laura and you can break this down real quick everybody don't get away you know everybody don't find their way out they don't find their way home like that song It's more than one way home but some people have a rough road finding that way home can you break it down to us please well it's a study came out um about five or six years ago um that showed that it was actually kind of uh, uplifting in some ways the study concluded that the criminal justice system in the United States gets it right, so to speak, about 95% of the time. And it's a human system, so I found that kind of cheering. But when you flip the numbers around and you say, okay, well, if that's correct, and 5% of uh, the time the criminal justice system doesn't get it right, if we send the wrong person away, then that means there could be about 10,000 people in the United States who are innocent, who are currently in jail. Mm, mm, mm. That's, 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 that's really hurtful and sad. And that's why we definitely got to come together as a team. And I tell people all the time, I'm all about action. You know, when I say, you know, hey, I, I, I don't, you know, it's no offense to nobody who marches. It's no offense to nobody who goes and, you know, hold the picket signs and all that. I understand that. I'm just not one of those type of people. I want to be on the reinforcement end where after people are already done that. Now we, when we get ready to go and do action, I want to come in with the action. I want, you know, because everybody in this world has a role to play. Do you get what I'm saying, Ms. Laura? I do, sir. Everybody has a role to play. And, Ms. Laura, I think me and your role and Jeffrey's role is we set back and we let the people pick it and get it going. And then that's when we come in and we speak for the masses. Does that make sense? It, it absolutely does, and it just is so, um, I can't wait to hear more about how I met Jeffrey recently at the uh, Innocence Conference in Portland, and I'm excited to hear how you started this a couple years ago and how you guys um, got together, because it really is, um, it's just, we try at Life After Innocence to not necessarily say it's the fault of the prosecutors or it's the fault of um, detectives. We try to say we are. This is a human system, so it will happen. Right. So let's just all be aware of it. Let's all be aware that it happens quite frequently, a lot more frequently than we think. And so what we say is, can, we're encouraging people, prosecutors, detectives, public defenders, who maybe didn't do a good enough job. We're encouraging people to. It's okay to say I think we might have had somebody um, who's not. The actual perpetrator, and right. I think we might have put somebody in prison. If people are able to be 
um, if they're able to own up to those things and the public encourages them and supports them for it and not denigrates them, then that's going to get us even farther. That's right. You're definitely right about that. Now, let me go to Mr. Day real quick. Mr. Day, once again, how you doing? And I hope you like the music because I know you're a man that loves good music. And I wanted yeah, to celebrate yeah, yeah. you today. I was checking that out. It sounds really <laughs> nice, man. It's a great thing for the show. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, I definitely set the tone for what we're going through. And I wanted to celebrate you today. And I want to tell you, I feel like it's your birthday being on my show today. Well, I appreciate it, brother, and happy birthday to me then. Happy birthday to you, and I mean that, definitely. So, Mr. Day, real quick, let my listeners know why you was locked up and, you know, what you, you know, how you got caught up in this whole situation. But when you went into the police station, how, you know, things wasn't right for you, and if you could do it all over again, how would you have done it? Well, you know, I, I went into the police station. First of all, I I, I grew up in, in the neighborhood where police never really – treated you just so I understood not to go in without an attorney but I suggest anybody that goes into the police station really shouldn't say anything until they get appointed an attorney who's going to be there with them the entire day That's right. until things are settled That's right. uh, I went in with an attorney who was strictly after the money he went in and left me hmm. and uh, he didn't support me so I heard when you said you know it's always good to tell a whole story so I go you know I go in with an attorney who I just gave two thousand dollars to just to walk me through the door, and he left and went to his daughter's birthday party. Oh, and uh, he put me in a room with a guy that was the eyewitness, and I sat in this room with this guy who was the eyewitness for about forty-five minutes. And then they took him one way, and then they took me into a lineup, and uh, he picked me out out of the lineup. Mm. So it was it was totally unjust, you know, through the door, man. It's, it's no one person you can blame, but the system. Right. Right. That's why we 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 working in the system so hard to change and bring attention to a lot of things because it's so important. And uh, you know, Laura, she talks about all the legal stuff, you know. That's right. And uh, but I'm talking about the piece that nobody talks about that nobody really see unless you're in this you know situation. That's right. Uh, That's a lot of guys are bullied. You know, police are bullies, and they are uh, it's a good old you know good old boy uh, situation. So when one walk into the police station. Keep your mouth closed. Know that they ain't there to help you. They're not there. They're not your friends. Not in the police station. Now, they said serve and protect. But what part of serving is they doing? They serve, getting ready to serve you up to the penitentiary for 60 and 90 years. You have to be quiet and wait on an attorney. They can't charge you with something, you know, you didn't say. If they're going to charge you, they're going to charge you anyway. So don't bury yourself. And, um, you know, just, just, you know, be truthful about the matter when you do talk to your attorney and, and, and hope for the best, man, because it's, it's rough. And here in Illinois, which you know is one of the most corrupt states in the, in the Union, uh, it's very hard to fight it. It's very hard to fight it. You know, Koji, when you asked um, Antoine and you said something about would you do the same, would you do it the same if, it, what, if you could what, do it over? What would you do different? Well, it's funny because I literally have never asked Antoine that question until right when we were waiting to come back on, over your break. And I asked him, do you wish you hadn't done it? And he said, yeah. Yeah, I would never do it again. Right. I would never do it again. I, I turned myself in after coming from a nice vacation in, in uh, New Orleans mm. and came back to this nonsense, and they knew it was a lie. And, uh, you know, but the police use the tools that they're, they're, they're handed, right. you know, to work in certain communities. Certain communities that don't happen in. Right. If I was blind, blue-eyed, and had long, curly, you know, white hair, it wouldn't have happened to me. Right. You know, not in this instance, but it happens to all different color people. But in my community, it happens on a daily basis. You know what, you know? Mr. Mr. Day, let me ask you a question real quick. Uh, how did you even, how did your name even come up in it? Because of a car. My car looked like somebody else's car, and I was the only person that went in. I, I, I went into the police station. You know, my mom was afraid because I wasn't going in. I ain't going to tell that story. But my mom was afraid that, you know, the police came to the house and they had a murder warrant. What they did was they, they, they looked for any guy that had this black vehicle that fit this description. That's the address they went to. And, I, you know, when I got back, they told me that the police had been all around my house. So I just went in. I hadn't done anything. So, yeah, I go in and see what happened. You know, I was stuck in my music and, you know, out here. And I hadn't hurt, you know, anybody. I know that. So I figured... You know, like we think, it can't happen to me. You know, that can't happen to me. So I'm going to go in, you know. And uh, I went in, went in, I went in with my, uh, 
with my attorney, and 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 there it went. You know. So no, I, I'll never do that again. So not I'll only I'll never do that again. So, if, if 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 I was to suggest to somebody, I say you get you a a a, a team of lawyers and go in. That's and right. Make sure that nobody's going anywhere because you can go in with a lawyer like he did me. He left me, and I didn't understand what the law was. You right. Know? Right. But you know what? They took advantage of me. They kidnapped me. Really, is what happened. Right. But you know what, Mister Day? One thing I want to say to you. Mm-hmm. When you went in, you went in with the intentions. They always say, be honest, and, you know, if you ain't got nothing to be scared of, come on with it. Well, you went on with it because you didn't have nothing to be scared of because you didn't have nothing to do with it. And then, like you said, you got hijacked. You, right. you definitely got kidnapped. But the thing right. about it is, I'm going to turn to Miss Laura right now real quick. Miss Laura, whenever you hear certain things like this, how he went in and he played it on the up and up like the law asked all us to, if we innocent, yeah. we ain't got nothing to worry about. Do we really have something to worry about, even if we innocent? Well, if you if you if you Google, um, don't talk to the police. There's actually a really very informative video, and it's done with a police officer and also with a lawyer, and they give you like ten reasons why you should never talk to the police. And that isn't to say that police are corrupt or that they're always pushing you and, and they know when you're innocent and they're just trying to you know. I don't really think they have terrible um, intentions. Right. But what you have to know is they're piecing together, you know, uh, an answer that they've really already come up with. Right. And so you can't really help yourself by going in and talking to them. I mean, if you're if you're wanted, don't run. You go get counsel and go in and make sure, uh, unlike in Antoine's situation, that the attorney stays with you and represents you through the process. That's right. I hear you. You're definitely right about that. Antoine, I want to come back to you real quick. Can you explain to people what all you lost in all those years, you know, being off the street and being stolen away, as you said? What all, let people know, I always ask my exonerees that, not only, not only did you lose your freedom, but you lost so much more that we don't know about and some of us don't understand, you know, the ramifications of what happens when a person gets strung up like this. Can you explain it real quick? Well, well I, one of the things I lost was an opportunity to, to watch my kids grow up and to be the son that I wanted to be to my parents. Uh, not being able to, you know, share in a lot of events, uh, you know, uh, holidays and, you know, things like that. And then to lose a son while I was in, incarcerated, it has a, I mean, you lose everything. You lose a whole sense of direction, of trust. You know, you don't know who to trust. And, 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 and you're thrown, you, you thrown into this jungle and just told to survive. Um, I lost everything, man. And, 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 but I found it, you know, on the other end, you know, because you have to go through a lot of things in order to even know what, what, your, what your call is. So I, I truly believe that they didn't harm me, they helped me because now I'm in the fight for the long haul. I'm here to help other people not go through the same things that I went through. Right. So now I'm, I'm mentoring young men and women. I'm mentoring uh, uh, adults coming out of prison. You know, we 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 showing them how to maintain and and, and become employed and become uh, uh, productive people and citizens of of, of the United States and uh, not continue this punishment of. I've been incarcerated, now I can't find a job, so I have to keep the cycle of recidivism going on. So this is what I I came home to. So I lost some things, but I gained so much more. I, I gained you. friends like Laura, the school, and, and people that, that, that I'm so, I mean, we're so close now, you know. And, 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 and if I hadn't went, maybe you, this wouldn't have happened. You got so me, I'm brother. not mad at them, because I went in the cave one way, and I came out another. I hear you. Know, you. So, I I I I I'm 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 fortunate to have the friends and 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 the ability to share things the way I, I I have, but everybody don't get this this turn. You know, we got guys right now that I know I was in prison with, that's still in prison. I know he's innocent. I know you know of crimes that that took place and they wasn't even there. But due to drug addictions and things like that, people nailed him to the cross, man. So yeah, I'm very fortunate. But I did. I lost a lot. I lost the time that I would never get back. Right. So and uh and and I and I think it you know I was cheated out of spending the time with my mom before she passed. You know they they really cheated me out of that because mm. she wanted to stay until I came home. I hear you. You know so it's it's you know I lost a lot man. You know right. and my kids are, are mentally damaged from that. Oh I I know I mean. Believe me, I didn't. We'd have been doing this show so long, man. I done heard some stories, man. Let me tell you something. When I go get in my car, man, I'm in a trance driving. Yeah. I'm in a trance because it's like 
unbelievable. You get what I'm saying? What some people then went through and fought through and, you know, just to get to a brighter day. But I want to I want to let you know that you definitely got me, man. Add me to the list of names of those good folks, man, that you done ran across because you will uh-huh. have firsthand access to me where you can call me personally. You and Laura, y'all don't got to use no middleman to get to me and keep right. me up on what's going on. And we all can move forward. And definitely, you know, me and my team, we can come together and do what we need to do, man, to put that out there. And you I know, wanted keep- to share something with you because I have a daughter in Vegas, and and by me being gone for the length of time I was gone, she went through a whole lot, and right now it's starting to affect her who she is today. And uh, uh, her mother runs a, a, a center for um, women down there that's been you know prostituted and stuff. So she's advocating for those sisters, and I really want to send a shout out to her man because I think she can be a very big access. Uh, to your program and, and what you guys are doing in Vegas, and uh, because you'll see exactly how well it hit home, but you know for yourself. Right. And uh, well, we'll talk about that. But I, I get caught up sometimes. This is why I couldn't be a radio uh, person. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you believe me? But anyway, believe me, you'll learn. Trust me, you'll yeah. learn. Yeah, but you know, these are the things, man, that I that I think need to be talked about. You know, we can talk about what okay. people been. It's where you are today. Right. Today we're running life out of justice. That's right. And and this is sinner, man. That 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 if it wasn't for Laura, wouldn't be alive today. You know, so I give her all the credit in the world. I hear you. You right about that, and that's why I said I want people to know. Me and Jeffrey, we can't do it alone. We have super friends like hey, Laura man, I'm here and for everybody. You. And I'm and I'm I mean pre- on anything, and and I'm here. I you preach. want me to talk to some guys? You want me to? Whatever you need me for, use me. All right. I will. Thank you very much. Now, let me do this. Uh, I want to tell you real quick, Mr. Day, uh, I definitely want you to get in touch with uh, your family out here, and uh, we'll go ahead and make that happen, and they can come in and be in the okay. studio with me when I do these shows, and I'll definitely interview them, give them a whole hour to talk about what they're doing, where the house is out here, where the women can go and be a part of it. You know, okay. and I got Foxy here. Foxy, she'll go down there firsthand, and she, you know, make sure everything is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And then she comes back and let me know and how we can help and what we need to do that's what we're here for but i want to go to miss laura real quick miss laura can you give people your website can you tell us about your books real quick where people can find your books i know we're on short time and i want you to talk to victor for a minute but i just want you on people's radar because the next uh i've been falsely accused you're gonna come back and be a part of me and jeffrey and be with us and i'm gonna do a one-hour interview with you so we can get deep i want to know how you got into this i want to know what way you up in the mornings you know what i'm saying i want to know what makes you jump for joy when you see one of these men come through those gates and come through those doors and that sunlight hit them out on the street i want to know what makes you you know your soul you know just bubble for this whole situation all right oh i think it's perfect thank you and thanks for mentioning the books i um i you can go to lauracaldwell.com and from there we've got life uh after innocence information and that'll take you to the uh, the Life After Innocence website page, and it's got um, the information on my books. I'm basically uh, a, a novelist and who kind of got back into this through a very strange writing experience. Um, but I'd love it if people also checked out Long Way Home, which is a book I wrote about uh, a gentleman that I represented at a murder trial, and he had been in jail for, in county, lockup essentially, for six years without a trial. So my girlfriend and I represented him, and it was watching him start over that inspired me to start Life After Innocence. So I'd love it if people checked out. It's called Long Way Home, A Young Man Lost in the System and the Two Women Who Found Him. Okay. All right. There it is. Definitely. We'll send you a signed copy. Oh, you know what? I appreciate it. And let me tell you what I do. I was on a flight uh, a month ago, and I was sitting, and and God always puts me in the right seat I need to be in. It was a lady sitting right beside me, and she was talking uh, to somebody. You know, like when you sit on the plane before you leave, and everybody's bored, and she was on the phone talking to somebody about her son in prison and how he's getting railroaded, and she's flying out of town. And I said... Oh, my goodness. And she don't even know who she's sitting beside. (laughs) So I went in my pocket and handed her my card. And she seen what I done. Me and her talked all the way out of town for about two hours on the plane. And I gave her a book that I had from another exonery. I gave her a book, which was autographed and signed to me. And I told her, you take this book. But what I want you to do, let this book help you. I want you to highlight pages. And when you finish with it, mail it back to me. And when you mail it back. 
<laughs> no, no. Okay, re- if you're going to do that, I'm going to send you 20 copies. Okay. That now, is fantastic. All right. So the reason why I told her to mail it back to me and highlight it, because when I run across the next person, I hand it to them. And now they got highlighted pages that, you know, can get right to the point of what they might be going through. You know, some people just don't want to read all these chapters. But if I have right. people to highlight them, you always go and look at the highlighted stuff. You get what I'm trying to say? And that mm-hmm. might be your niche right there. And then we keep it moving because that's the way we got to do with knowledge. We definitely, like I said, whenever you know somebody who's constantly, constantly talking about this and talking about that, them are the best person, to, best people to give the information to. Let them run and tell that. You get what I'm right. saying? Run and tell that. I like that. Tell that. <laughs> we were sitting here when you were talking, run and tell that. We were nodding and smiling and looking at each other. Yeah, I like that. That's right. And if we can have more people that talk about nonsense, talk about good sense, Oh, we, we'll be in a great we'll be in a great situation right now with what me, you and Jeffrey trying to do to help our exonerees. But what I want to do real quick, I'm moving fast, everybody. So whenever a question's answered, if everybody can answer quick, we can keep moving on short time. Victor, thank you for being on the show today. I want you to meet Miss Laura Carwell and Mr. Antoine Day. Now, I need you, Victor, to explain quick as possible to Miss Laura Carwell what you're going through. And we'll let her, you know, give you the synopsis of what is best for you to do. Okay. Um, well, I was accused of um, aggravated sexual assault with a child, and um, I was put in jail from June 25th through, through January 23rd. The only reason that they lowered my bond, my bond was at $300,000 at the beginning. The only reason they lowered my bond was because they got the DNA test results in it. They came back negative, although there was two DNAs on there two people's DNAs on there, they're still trying to uh, charge me charge me with this. And um, and so you're you're obviously concerned because you're I've got unfortunately I have um, some exonerees who were convicted despite um, tests showing that the DNA did not match them. Um, right. however, you, you obviously have counsel, right? Because they should be able to make a huge deal of this. And if you don't have counsel I'd like to help you find some. Oh, yes, we do. We actually, we actually have an attorney. You know what? Um, if you want, we'll um, have. I'll get your information um, off air, and we can chat about this. And I can um, call your attorney if you want and see kind of what's you know what they're looking at. I'm sure they're doing a great job, but it's always nice to have another ear sometimes. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. So what I want to do real quick, I want to go to my team real quick. And, uh, you know, I want y'all to give Mr. Day some love and give Miss Laura some love, you know, for being on the show today. Miss Peaches, I'm going to go to you first. Hey, everybody. The show is sounding great. You guys are all doing such a great job. Um, You're working so very hard. Koji, you know, I'm so proud that, you know, you have these shows and you give everyone a place to be able to come together and make moves. And I think that's awesome. Um, Miss Laura, you, you're an incredible person. I can just hear through your voice and everything that you're doing. I can't wait to read your book. And um, I think you mentioned, Koji, that uh, Mr. Day, how are you? I'm great. How about you, sir? Good. Um, you, you do music? I am. I am a musician. That is awesome. Um, whenever you send some stuff to Koji, I would love to hear it. I, I love, I'm a fan of music. I wish I was talented in that area. I'm not, so I just get to live through other people <laughs> okay right. we have some stuff on wax we i'm, I'm going definitely because i'm i'm staying connected to this brother no, i pr- okay. appreciate that man i really do i really appreciate that okay foxy we're gonna go to you real quick hi laura hi mr day hello um, hi there hi um laura i wanted to know do you deal with people that come out of jail that's on medicine that was medicated while they was in jail We've seen some, uh, yeah, that's a tough situation because they really need to be released with the meds that they're on and someone to see. And we've, we've seen exonerees come out who a lot of times no one is really uh, informed that there's going. Sometimes people show up on a um, call, you know, in court, and it'll get the, the state will say, you know, we're going to drop it right now. So a lot of times there's just no ability to plan. But it's interesting you brought that up. We have not had that issue come up ourselves in Illinois, but I'm really glad you mentioned it because I know we will have it at some point because we've seen we've gone to some innocence conferences and um, seen some people who are really hurting and suffering because they weren't released with their meds. And so I don't know what the, an- the right answer is to that, but I'm glad you brought it up. Okay, thank you. 
All right. So we're going to go to Allen, man. Allen, man, are you still with us? Yes, sir, Cody. All right. Hey, I want to tell you real quick, we're going to move fast. Man, you got the whole studio lit up. We got the lasagna <laughs> right you. here in the studio today. Everybody's eating and enjoying the show. Mm -hmm. I wish Miss Laura and Mr. Day was here. They'll love this lasagna we got in here today. Yeah, as long as you don't have no meat in it. Uh, well, we have to make you another kind of lasagna. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll make you a, a veggie lasagna. I'll do that. And that's, that'll work. Oh, yeah. So real quick, Alan, man, we're on short time. What would you like to say to both of them? You know what? Um, i like to ask both of you guys, and, you know, I would like to say uh, hello to both of you. And um, I just want to ask, um, Mr. Day, you said something about um, – bringing more than one lawyer to court with you. How many would you recommend? I'm, I was saying bring more than one lawyer to the police station because if you're not okay. certain that one's going to stay, maybe the other one will. But, uh, uh, you know, really in, in the courtrooms today, you, you have some shop lawyers, man. And I really found, found myself getting personal with an attorney. So you can really feel if this guy's interested in you, helping your life or helping his pocket. That's what we need to determine. You know, so now I, I don't think you need 20 lawyers because if you got 20 and none of them doing the work, you just, you know, that much more out of luck. You got that right. Mm -hmm. Now, don't you think if you, if you wouldn't have gave them the whole, you know, $2,000 up front that they probably would have stayed because they knew that the other half had to come? Yeah, yeah. But you know what? At that time, you know, you get real nervous in those situations, man. You know, right. And money is not even worth, you know, your 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 your, your freedom. You, got that freedom. you know what I'm saying? So it, it it's one of those things to where, um, uh, you know, you just you you're nervous. You you don't really make clear decisions when you're under a lot of pressure. That's right. You, you know, right and then there. like I said again, you got to remember you're dealing with a group of trained bullies who yeah. know how to bully you in a certain situation. And if you're right. not ready for it, they wake up doing it. They go to bed doing it. So they're trained and they they. This is what they do, man. Okay. Right, I understand. Uh, now, Ms. Lawyer, now, now uh, can can something be done about a, uh, a lawyer like that who, you know, basically, um, wouldn't that be mis misrepresentation because uh, he just took the money and run? Right. You now, know, it's funny uh, you say that because um, that's a concern that we have. There's a couple things that we haven't really been able to focus on at Life After Innocence yet. We're, you know, only five years old or... I don't know if I should say only. In some ways, it seems like we've been doing it for a while. But we hear from people over and over that one of the reasons that they were wrongfully convicted was because of um, inadequate representation. And I am it really concerns me the amount of money um, flooding to some attorneys who aren't as meticulous as they had promised the bar that they would be. That's one of the things, um, you know, we've wanted to look into. We always have to look at the, our mission is to help exonerees after they get out to start their lives over. Um, the other thing, we a lot of times wish we could spend more time on the families. Like, Koji, the fact that you might consider having um, Antoine's family would be amazing because to me it's a feeling of I, I get a clench when I think about how much people do and how much these families go through when they have someone in jail for someone for something that they did not do. I mean, it is just so emotional, but then there's the whole toll of, you know, trying to get the money, trying to visit them, trying to support them. And I really, really, really wish we had more, you know, sort of time and resources to devote to them, too, because I think what happens sometimes the exonerees get out and, that's who we focus on because that's who we're there to support. But I feel like sometimes the families who've held them up for so long, you know, aren't as recognized as they should be. So thanks for bringing that up because that's two of the things that we've wanted to address. Okay. Thank you, Alan, man. I appreciate that. So what I, what I need to do, we down to we down to five minutes. But what I want to do, I want to give you, Miss Law, I want to give you a minute of it. And Mr. Day, I want to give you a minute of it to definitely talk about, to give words of encouragement to our listeners all around the world, starting with you, Miss Law. Well, I got to tell you, I you know the I started Life After Innocence after a phone call from a law student who said, "Hey, should we be um, doing something for innocent?" And I said, "I think we should do something for them after they get out." I mean, it was just someone asking a question and me saying, "Huh, maybe we should look into it." It started from a mere conversation, so things can start from here, from someone listening to this. Please, you know, check us out. Consider donating to Life After Innocence. It really, we are completely funded by. There are no grants currently. Completely. So we have to sort of, you know, um, really ask the public for help until we get, the, you know, the government to realize that some grants might need to be created for this. 
Okay. So if you check out lauracaldwell.com and you can go from there to get information about Life After Innocence in the books, I'd really appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Real quick, Mr. Day. You know, you know, you have to stay encouraged. You have to know, you know, your rights first and foremost. And, um, and you have to support people like yourself and, and programs that's out here to help you because you never know when you're needed. Everybody think it only happens to somebody else. And, uh, and it's a shame to say that by us doing the work that we're doing, and Laura has been doing it for a while, that most of the exonerees don't even reach back. You know, people are not reaching back. They're not coming back and saying, hey, we're going to support you because you supported us. And uh, it's, it's sad, but uh, you just have to be prepared out here today. You know, people have to get off of Facebook, and, and, and when it don't make a difference, you have to do things to make you smarter because the system has changed so much. They find the new ways to railroad. So you really have to educate yourself every day. That's right. But well, we celebrating you a little bit more, Mr. Day, as we leave. Out. I hear you. <laughs> All right. Well, I definitely, like I said, I definitely want to thank y'all for being in today. Y'all been a great, y'all definitely been great guests. Now, I'm bringing each one of y'all back individually because I need an hour with both of y'all. I need people to hear the full story. And to hear the real people behind the story, you know what I'm saying? That this ain't just a fad. This is something that y'all live for. This is something that y'all do. This is something that y'all wake up for. You know, and I think y'all both are doing a great job. Mr. Day, like I said, you know, I'll be getting in touch with you. And Miss Laura, okay. uh, Jay, I'll get in touch with you. Y'all have my personal cell number. So y'all don't, we, there's no third party. Whatever y'all got to tell me, we need, you know, if y'all need this information to get to me quick, y'all be able to text me and get it right to me. And I do appreciate y'all. And I want y'all to keep doing what y'all doing. I got y'all's back 100%. I'm a fan of y'all's work as well. And hey, let's just try to change the world one show at a time. I, each time, each one of y'all goes even moving further. But if y'all can put people on my radar, I do appreciate that. I'll do the same for y'all. And let's not let's not stop here. If we family members, we need to do these family reunions more than once a year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, love That's that right. idea. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank y'all for being on today. And I'll get in touch with both of y'all after the show today. Hey, bro. All right, thank you. Much love to you guys. So, everybody, I want y'all definitely to check both of them out and make sure that y'all check out their websites and the great things that they're doing. But Mr. Obi Anthony will uh, be in in a second. You don't want to miss his story. Much love to everybody. It's our first hour. We'll be right back with our second hour. <laughs>